decía, soy una carga, soy una carga, soy una carga. He would say, I'm a burden, I'm a burden, I'm a burden. Y yo le decía, no, no, no. And, and, and I would tell him, no, no. Pero sí. Sí, era una carga. And, uh, but yes, he, he was a burden. Now we've set aside some time for any newcomers that might like to speak. So anyone, if it's your first or second time with us, the floor is open. Yes, would you like to? Maybe not. Okay, no pressure. My name's Annie. Hi, Annie. Hi, Annie. My mom died a week ago, so I'm just here for trying it. I have a lot of resistance to things like this, but I, I came to these a couple of years ago. Well, I was forced to come, and I guess it, um, I guess it helped, so. Um, my mom was old, and she wasn't altogether there at the end. And we were pretty much estranged before that, so it really wasn't a huge blow. But I did love her. And she didn't have an easy life. She had DID, which became extreme at the end, and dementia. And my father died when I was a baby from starvation um, because he had psychotic depression. And he starved himself, which I'm sure was just as pleasant as it sounds. And then there's my brother. My older brother had schizophrenia, and when he was 16, he hanged himself in my mother's bedroom, and of course, he suicide note blamed her, accusing her of putting people inside him. So, that was my mom's life. And then she lived in our house at the end, before our hospice. We weren't even talking before that. I mean, we were, and then we weren't, and then we were. She's completely manipulative, until my husband finally enforced a no-contact rule, which lasted until I got pregnant with my daughter. I didn't let her anywhere near me when I had my first, my son, which is why I gave her my daughter, who she immediately stabbed her hooks into. And I just, I felt guilty again, I felt guilty again. When she got sick, not that she was really even my mom at the end, and not that she would ever feel guilty about anything. And I just don't want to put any more stress on my family. I'm not even really sure if they could, could give me that support. And I just, I just feel like I just sometimes feel like it's all ruined. <laughs> and then I realize that I am to blame. Or not that I'm to blame, but that I am blamed. <laughs> and what do you think you feel blamed for? Okay, hi, my name is Noor Azima Betty Sremer. I'm going to present the synopsis of Movie Hereditary. So, uh, the synopsis is the story of and around Annie Carham, a talented artist and the mother of two children, which is Peter and Charlie, and the wife of Steve. Steve. It is a private moment in the movie that reveals crucial information about Annie's psychological states and set the stage of further events and the unfold. During the therapy seasons, Annie discusses her troubled family history, including the recent death of her mother. She reveals that her mother had a secretive and manipulative nature, causing tension and conflict within the family. Annie also discusses her strained relationship with her own children, especially her teenage daughter, which is Charlie. As the season progresses, Annie opens up about her feelings of guilt and the overwhelming grief she experienced following her mother's death. She shares her ambivalence about attending the funeral and admits her 
to a feeling a mix of relief and burden after her mother's passing. Anis Rafi provides a supportive and empathic present allowing her to delve deeper into her emotion. The scene is significant about it, explores the complex dynamics within Anis family and foreshadows the disturbing events that occur later in the film. It is established the psychological underpinning of the story and gives the audience a glimpse into Anis' fragile mental states. Throughout the therapy season, tension will as Annie grapples with unresolved emotion as and her troubled family story. I'm going to explain about the environmental dimension of artifacts and objects. So, based on the scene, the therapy season takes place in a small, dimly lit room which is contribute to the overall atmosphere of the scenes. The room is sparsely decorated, creating a sense of sterility and isolation. The walls are painted in neutral colors, enhancing the feeling of detachment and emotional regression. Besides that, for furniture and props, the therapy room contains minimal furniture, which is a simple desk and a few chairs. The therapist's desk is cluttered with paperwork and notepad, indicating a professional yet disorganized environment, the lack of a person personal touch or decoration further emphasize the clinical nature of the setting. Then, the lighting in the room is subdued with soft, diffuse light coming from an unseen source. This contributes uh, to the somber and introspective tone of the therapy season. The color in the room are pre predominantly cool tones such as blues and grays which add to the sense of detachment and unused eh, and unease. Lastly, on the walls of the therapy room, there are several frame artworks. This artwork consists of abstract painting and serene landscape. The choice of artwork can symbolize the search of inner peace and emotional st stability, constructing with the disturbing events occurring in the protagonist's life. Next is environmental dimension of setting arrangement. So, the scene takes place in the therapist's office which is typically features and calm and natural environment to create a safe and confidential space for the client. The room is usually furnished with a comfortable seating such as chairs for, or a couch to promote relaxation. The lighting in the therapy season scene is typically soft and even ensuring relaxed and non-intimidating atmosphere. The goal is to create a warm and welcoming environment which encourages open communication and emotional vulnerability. Next, uh, the color palette is therapy season scene is often chosen to evoke a sense of tranquility and serenity. Neutral color like beige, like blue or pale green are commonly used. The decor is usually minimal with a focus of on simplicity to avoid distraction and maintain a calming um, ambience. The um, environmental sound in the therapy season scene are typical subdued with a low ambience noise level. This helps create a quiet and intimate setting allowing the character's dialogue to take center stage. Next environmental dimension is shape of meeting. So, uh, based on the scene that we choose, uh, we can see that the shape of meeting throughout this scene is roundtable discussion. So why we say so? This is because roundtable has become the most customary way for private discussion to take place. And in a roundtable arrangement, everyone can easily make eye contact with each other uh, which promotes communication and also trust. So for example, in this movie, we can see that everyone is focusing on Annie when she confesses and expressing her feelings throughout the therapy session. So based on this scene, we can see that all the members are facing each other and paying attention when Annie starts to talk about her thoughts and feelings because of the roundtable discussion that used during the therapy session. Next dimension is territory. Okay, as we already uh, watched the movie, the scene that we choose, the beginning of the scene when uh, Annie wants to enter the hall and she wants to close the door, but the sounds of the door 
uh, is very clear and tightly. So this shows that the therapy session conducted is in a closed area, not in a spacious place. So why therapy sessions are typically held in a closed and quiet place? Okay, this is because for several reasons, including confidentiality, focus, safety, and also privacy. So in terms of confidential, uh, which means that whenever we want to share our thoughts or feelings, it's actually we should not should not be repeated to anyone else. Where a closed and quiet place like a closed hall helps to ensure that the client's privacy is protected. So, the client will feel uh, more comfortable when sharing their thoughts and feelings. And in this scene also, we learn that therapy session can involve sensitive topics which it's actually not easy for people to easily open up about their thoughts and feelings in public, especially with strangers. So, a quiet and close place like hall provides a sense of privacy and security. Okay, for example, when the leader tried to first approach Annie to start the sharing session, Annie refused to. But when she noticed that everyone in the hall was looking at her, she finally feel safe to share her thoughts and feelings. Not because of she feel shy, but because of the attention given by all the members. She feels safe to open up about herself. Uh, other than that, a close and quiet place helps in minimizing distractions and allows people to focus on the therapeutic process. Hello, my name is Yusni Zasmaya Asmi. My metric number is 281220. I will continue with uh, environmental dimension time speaking. It is actually determined the effectiveness of the group uh, discussion or in this movie, it determined the effectiveness of the therapy session among them. Time also should be convenient and suitable for all the members so that they can contribute their attention during that therapy season to uh, understand people's story and establish productivity and prevent resignment. Based on the scene from 0 0.02 to 0 0.21 second shows that this therapy season is being conducted during night time. Based on the number of people at the therapy season shows that night time is a convenience and suitable for all people to join because at night uh, is free time for most people. Furthermore, attendance and time management impact the success of this therapy season communications as the therapy season progress in since one uh, in since one minute and three seconds to one minute twenty five seconds, they also listen carefully to what Annie speaks about her problem. And at last Annie got to finish her story which at first seen zero point five zero second she seemed uh, not confident to start her story. continue with a uh, personal dimension which is para language para language is uh, a sound that person makes that accompany his or her verbal message based on the scene from 0 0.5 uh, 50 to 0 0.53 uh, second any refuse to share her story by saying maybe not using a voice tone like she is not really interested to share when any shared her story in the scene uh, 2 minute 13 second to 2 minute 58 second Annie started to use a voice tone that she tried to hide the pain she felt as Annie goes uh, over the side of the terrible occurrence that involved her family members in the scene 3 minutes to 4 minutes 4 second her voice tone changed and she seemed to be exper experiencing a range of emotions uh, including sadness grief, rage, and guilt. The scene captures uh, the internal conflict that she is going through. Lastly, in the scene 3 minutes 55 uh, seconds to 4 minutes 4 seconds, they started to ask what do any think about what she blamed for. Shows that the audience exhibited a range of emotions including concern, uh, empathy and interest for any stories and any voice tone shows that any is hopeless.
The scene taken from 005 to 018 shows that Annie looks guarded and tense. Her brow furrowed slightly and her eyes reflect a mixture of worry, sadness and disappointment. As the therapy session progresses in scenes 103 to 125, Annie delves deeper into her family history and her facial expressions change to reveal growing vulnerability and emotional turmoil. As Annie recounts the tragic events involving her family members in scene 142 to 218 and 242 to 310, her facial expressions show a range of intense emotions. She displays a combination of sadness, grief, guilt, and anger. In the scene from 3 to 9 to 352, her eyes fill with tears and her voice trembled as she described the immense pain she ended. Next, scene 2 to 9 to 2 3 9 show an important aspect of the contrast between Annie's attempt to appear calm and the underlying emotional turmoil conveyed through her facial expression. The scene effectively captures the dichotomy between the mask Annie presents to the world and the internal struggles she faces. Finally, the other's facial expressions also play a role in the scenes taken from 2 to 3 to 2 to 8 and 3 3 2 and 3 5 2. They show a mixture of concern, empathy, curiosity as they listen to any story. Their reaction depicted through subtle changes in their facial expression contribute to the overall emotional atmosphere of the scene. Annie, who is seeking therapy because of troubling family experience, display vulnerability through eye contact. By maintaining eye contact at scenes 059 to 101, she demonstrates her willingness to open up and share her deepest fears and concerns with the therapist. Next, the scene taken from 224 to 230 shows that other people give prolonged eye contact to Annie after she stops speaking. It displays signs of mutual trust that they really want to know what happens next about the context. Finally, eye contact can also reflect power dynamics in a conversation. In scene 351 to 402, the therapist is positioned slightly in front of Annie, maintaining direct eye contact while Annie looks in his direction. This visual composition suggests a power imbalance with the therapist potentially asserting dominance or control in the therapeutic relationship. The personal dimension, which is a gesture and body movement, the way of Annie Graham moves her hands is an important part of how she conveys her emotion and inner turmoil. Starting from the scene 055, it shows that she often clenched her hand tightly throughout the session, showing her anxiety and need to her back to hold back her emotions. Her desire to maintain balance and calm during therapy session is communicated through his this gesture. Also, in scene in scenes three to three uh, three oh one and 316 to 325, Annie makes hand gesture to emphasize a point or express frustration while speaking. Her communication is strength with this gesture, allowing her to express her ideas and feelings more forcefully. Next, the scene taken from 335 to 339 shows that Annie is making test movement that reveal the anxiety and struggle she is experiencing. Uh, her agitated gesture indicate that she had trouble staying calm or comfortable during the session. In conclusion, a deeper understanding of Annie's emotional struggle and her attempt to express herself in therapeutic environment is provided by the interplay of her hand gesture and tense movement. This, this non-verbal cues give her character depth and heighten the tension and realism of the scenes. Okay, for the last personal dimension, which is posture, Annie's body language throughout the session sheds important light of, on her emotional states and inner conflict. Her body posture changed over time to reflecting her inner conflict and response to the therapy session. In the scenes 315 to 325, when Annie leans forward, it shows that she is engaged and eager to talk to the therapist about her thoughts and feelings. This forward leaning stance shows her willingness to face and discuss her emotion. On the other hand, in the scene 326 to 334, Annie leans back, uh, leans back and shows a defensive or cautious attitude especially when talking about complicated subjects. This position refers to her reluctance to fully express certain feelings or experiences. A dynamic visual depiction of Annie's emotional journey and her efforts to mobilize the therapeutic environment is produced by changes in her body posture. That's all from us. Thank you.